Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're going to be changing up the gears. So instead of a project, today's class is an interview that I had with a friend of mine, Miss Fortune. She teaches in Washington. So we're going to check in on the fun stuff that she does in her classroom and some great ceramics tips for you guys. Before we start the interview, let's go ahead and make sure that we got our homework taken care of, which was we like, subscribe, shared, all those various platforms so that we are good to go for future classes. First, nice to see you. Yeah, um, you too. <laughs> how has this year been for you? For Because as we're diving into being in COVID, being out of the building, how has, has this been? I know how it has been in Georgia. How has it been in Washington? Uh, so we've been fully online since um, spring break last year. Um, and so we're potentially going hybrid in March. In uh, January, they, re they we do um, online every morning, and then the afternoon has been asynchronous, but we can have small groups of students now in, in the afternoon. So that's been nice, one, just to actually see kids and interact in person with them, and then especially for the struggling students uh, that just their whatever their home situation there that doesn't really work for them so they've really appreciated to be able to come in and then i teach um three ceramics classes so the students who want to glaze can come in and glaze their work so that's been um nice so um it's been hard though you know and overall just trying to teach um art online and students are just reluctant well, they basically never turn their cameras on for the most part, the odd student, but, um, and lots of them don't even like to use the microphones and, you know, so just feeling disconnected and they feel disconnected, but I think they almost don't know what, they don't feel comfortable, but they still are craving the interaction at the same time. I 100% I agree. I think that um, having that space for them to come in just to glaze, even if you're making everything at home, but just to have that little bit of normalcy come into play. Yeah. It, yeah. Now, do you only teach ceramics or are you teaching uh, other things? Uh, I teach um, uh, two intro art classes and then AP art, one block, and then three ceramics classes. That's a is that six classes or is that five? So I teach six periods. We have a um, block schedule. So we have an eight day, uh, we have a four day, uh, sorry, four period day. So, and I get a, one a planning every day. So that is pretty sweet in that way. So one day I teach ceramics and the other day I teach intro and APR. So you're doing that AB schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Gotcha. Yeah. No, I'm on block two and um, I did middle school for 10 years. And no, me too. <laughs> we, that, that's, that is the tried and true battle ready. If you, if you get into teaching, I think doing at least a few years in middle school, you can handle elementary yeah. or school without it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now we kind of got in touch with each other because of Facebook and, and, this poster that you made, what can you tell me about? Cause like, I'm, I'm curious, like where was the beginnings of this? And, uh, cause I saw it and I was like, this is intense. I love this. Uh, so, uh, it's only a little snapshot of what I've been working on. So, um, I used to be um, president of Washington art education association. And so I'm past president now. So I was spending all this time doing that work. And so that finished in, um, basically first of November, and so I'm like, well, what I've been wanting to do, what kind of, and so I have, and from teaching ceramics, I had created a number of like resources and things that I would share with students. And some of them I do have on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, but I thought, well, I should like package them together and, oh, it'll be maybe like 10 pages or something. And so then I like start working on it and I'm like, oh, maybe I should add a page on this and um, put that, this together and some of pull out some other things and so then it became like 25 pages and then it became 45 and then 65 and then 80 and then 100 and then um, I was talking to um, Cora Cummins who's in the that ceramics group and she's from Ireland 
and um, I was like intrigued to have, connect with her. And so she had a suggestion of maybe just how to divide the book into sections. And then I'm like, well, what if I actually split them into two? And so now there are two books and one's 75 pages and one's 85 pages. Um, and someone had said, um, what about um, uh, whatever the chemistry of um, of clay and so that was one um so a lot of the stuff i'm not i feel like i have a broad knowledge that's not that deep right um whereas people who have been you know full-time ceramicists and you know they have like a really deep background on it um but my sort of specialty is i think kind of taking knowledge and calling it down to um the key things and then I like to organize it visually so that it looks um, really good. So some of the things like that chemistry I didn't really, I mean, I took chemistry in high school, so I know the periodic table, but I didn't know much about it. So I, but when I looked to see if anyone else had it, there wasn't really anyone who put it together in a way that just someone who's casually interested in it could look at it and kind of glean some important things from it. It's either was really heady or it was just like a piece here and there. It wasn't put together. So kind of that's an overview of sort of what the book is, is taking the stuff I already had and done and then putting it with new stuff that seemed to be gaps if, and capturing sort of a overall, like if you're a brand new ceramics teacher, what do you need to know? And what can and with a bunch of things that you could share with your students? Yeah, because I saw the the poster piece that you had initially, and just the periodic table alone, I was like, this this is fascinating because, like you said, if you had just a glancing interest in ceramics and you needed some sort of a grounding element that the broad populace could understand, it's like you, you, everybody knows what the periodic table is, but then how do we apply? Um, I think I was we were, I was putting stuff for, on there for you for uh, chrome and copper, and then how those elements change when you add fire to the to the equation. Mm -hmm. How do these things burn? What what are the yeah. what are the changes that happen inside? Mm -hmm. the kids? I think that's something that most kids are they're like, well, we take this paint out of this bottle, we put on this piece of clay, and it makes something pretty. And I'm like, mm -hmm. first it's glaze, mm -hmm. and it's a chemical, and just that 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 discussion is it's. Mm -hmm. It opens up a, a number of doors, especially for for steam, for any integration of of getting science elements into the art classroom. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic stuff. Is the book on Amazon or? Uh, so I've been doing edits to it. So I've um, I'm um, my plan is I just um, started a my own. Well, PayHip. It's kind. Of, it's a e-commerce site. So that's where I'm hoping to to sell it um, in the digital forms. I have actually um, two other clay resource books and they are, um, they, they can, you can order them and have them um, like print on demand so people can order it and actually get a, a print copy of it um, or they can um, purchase the digital copy. And right now the digital copies of those, the first two books are on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, but you know, teachers pay, teachers pay, take half the uh, <laughs> of it. So if I can sell them for a little cheaper and then get 95% of the profits, then, um, you know, that's exactly a, a cool perk. So uh. <laughs> Which, I'll say, I'll tell you that doing so you use those things in class as something that you print out and you put on the wall or is it a worksheet or what kind of applications do you guys have for it? Uh, so I guess, you know, with my set of whatever, 10 or 12 that I was uh, initially doing, those are ones that I, I use with students. Um, I have a cop, I think two of them, I think I have printed up big on my wall. Um, other ones, when we're in classroom, I have them printed out, some of them in like a plastic folder or whatever, and I'll just put one on every table or one for every pair of students so that they can look at the resource that way. Um, the two first two books, I have a couple of copies of them 
in my room. So when they're basically idea books, one is on um, uh, technique based ideas. So a, a, basically a chapter on pinch pot ideas, a chapter on slab ideas, a, pat, a chapter on extruder ideas. And so if some, a student's stuck, I'm like, steal like an artist, here's, um, you know, here's a resource they can look at. And then the second one is uh, basically a hundred functional ideas. So a page of each um, type. And so I have those, so students would use the book form of it. Um, and then with, cause we're digital now, I, sh I share with them also the digital version though for it. Cause I basically am just about to launch the, the new resources being available. And like the nice thing about the digital ver digital things is like if I would decide I want to add a page, I can just up update the file and update it on the website, and then it's got the new pages or any changes or that kind of thing. So that's the cool thing about um, the digital world is that it's it's fluid. I find that fascinating, just because usually you can't once you upload it, it's locked. You can't add to it. So to know that it's it's accessible still, that's Oh, that's nice. Um, but the with the students using that in the classroom, with everything being digital, are they also having access to a digital file, or is it is it straight? So, like, are they getting kind of copies of the book as well? How 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 are you doing that? Yeah. So I um, they're PDF files. So I um, just have on my list of resources that they have available. Um, the PDF file that they can look on, look at. And uh, for those, the first two books, like like I said, there's this, the one that has by technique. Like I just can, instead of sharing the whole 160 page document, I can just share with them the chapter that's on whichever me, um, method they're focusing on. Uh, really kind of the wrap up questions that I had here was, <clears throat> um, because of the whole virtual aspect and, and being in this virtual setting, one, what is your best teacher hack of being in the virtual environment that's like this This is what saved a lot of my brain over the last 11 months? And then also, how has uh, this aspect changed you for future teaching? So for the, the years that you still are going, what, what are you going to be doing differently in the future? I'll answer the second first question first. Um, I think the, like, we post now assignments for students to do, and you can put all the resources that they need for it in embedded in the assignment. And that way, if they weren't paying attention, if they missed the day, if they want to review it, they ha have super easy access to it. And so I think it helps me as a teacher be organized and it's so good for students to have that available. So that's something I'll continue um, in, the, in the future. And um, um, the other one, um, just something I've been focusing on lately is um, with the digital submissions, students can get, um, the little devil side of them saying, well, maybe I can just find it online and submit it. Um, and so uh, one of the things I've been really working on with students is they have to submit multiple um, images um, that include evidence that they created the artwork. And I like to be flexible. And so they have a few different versions that they can. So um, they can, um, you know, turn in their uh, finished artwork with them holding it. They can do submit their finished artwork with their ID card sitting beside it. Mm -hmm. Or if they're doing um, an, something in, in process, if they have the in process work um, to sh show them, you know, it part way through or something like that, that can also be evidence um, that they were created it. And so I've had way less than um, when I didn't initially have that requirement, I was getting more of the um, people taking work that wasn't theirs. Um, but you can use um, Google image reverse image search, which is another, I guess that would be a hack um, for teachers. It's like, it well, if you do it, if you use it, you actually can find quite often um, 
the actual one that the student turned in and see it. So, yeah, my favorite to um, definitely the reverse image lookup. Um, my buddy David, who he teaches, a, he's in the same county, but he, um, he, me and him had a long conversation about like that, where he posts to his Facebook or between our groups, and the amount of times he uses that in a week is just. Mm -hmm. It's like half of his day is just reverse imaging image lookups. And I had one that was kind of in the same. I can't believe you're going to try and sell this one to me. It was it was really it was sad at the what they were trying to get away with, because it wasn't that they just took a picture of the screen, but they took a picture where the framing of the image still you could see Microsoft written on the margin. And I'm just <laughs> It's not that you're lying. It's that you're badly lying. <laughs> it made it worse. The for the rest of term, what do you guys see? Um, do you guys see happening? Do you guys see your students coming back into the building on a five day schedule? I mean, us here, we're just kind of thinking maybe two or three days a week. Yeah, we're looking at a um, students would come into the building four days a week, but being on a block schedule. Um, that they would, uh, we would only, so they would be coming in, sorry, they would be coming in two days a week. And so we would only see each, um, uh, each student once a week only. So it's not, you know, I think it's better than not seeing them, especially it, for ceramics where they can at least come in and glaze or get some of those additional supplies. But it's just so much different than in-person learning. And I just hope that the fall we can um, be back um, and something, I know it still won't be exactly the same, but go back to something much more similar than, to what we had before. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for, uh, for taking the time to, to meet with me. Um, and then I definitely would love to do this again uh, in the future. Well, I appreciate, again, the work that you do and the enthusiasm you have for, uh, I think, both art, well, for art, for art students, and that you share your stuff with art educators. Um, so thank you for, for all that you do for them and us. I wish I could take even a, a notion of, of credit for any of that. Uh, thanks again, but I hope to talk to you again at some point uh, in the near future. Okay, great. Well, thanks for uh, checking in. <laughs> See you. Bye now. Okay. Bye-bye. Also, down in the description, I put in the links for the sites where you can access her book, you can access her posters. And again, if you guys want to pick any things up, just click in the links below. Awesome class. I hope that you guys got something awesome out of that conversation like I did. There were so many wonderful tidbits between how we talk about glaze, how we use the periodic table to figure out how these glaze components work together. I think it's a it's a huge importance for us to make sure that we're bringing science, we're bringing math, everything into the art classroom because we want to try and engage our students as much as possible. Now, let's go ahead and take care of that homework assignment like we always do, which is like, subscribe, share all of your platforms, get the message out there to as many people as we possibly can, want to educate the masses. As always, if you guys had a question, comment, or concerns, raise your hand down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions for my classmates. If I don't know the answer, I'll pass along to her just the same. And as always, I will see you guys next class. Until then, Later, guys.